Hi, Creative Katie here. Welcome to my channel. And today we have an art journal page tutorial for you. Here is the inspiration, a picture of some beautiful blooms that I took at Bouchard Gardens in lovely Victoria, BC. And here's a quick sneak peek of the page that I am going to create. So I'm starting off in my 7x10 Canson Mixed Media art journal page and I'm flipping through some of the pages you can get a sneak peek tutorials for most of those can be found on my YouTube channel so I tape off across the top there is a line there and I put a thing of tape there and that keeps all the gunk from getting into the coils keeps things nice and neat and I've placed a layer of gesso on the page as per usual and now I'm just doing some stamping I've got some of these these swirl stamps and this is just going to add some interest to the background grunging it up a bit it's a good way to start and to utilize your stamps so I'm going to use a mixture of yellow and this phthalo turquoise and as I get started I decide I'm going to put it on quite wet I'm spraying it with water the paint and the page a little bit just to keep it wet because I'm going to do the saran wrap technique on here to add even another layer of texture. So there's lots of ways that you can add interest to a page very simply. And I know that if I mix the phthalo uh, turquoise and the yellow I'm going to make kind of more of a teal green color and I'm happy with that would have kind of liked a little bit more yellow to stay true yellow but you know what I'm good with this so I'm scrunching up the saran wrap on here and I'm going to let it dry for a very short time it's not very wet and I, I don't want it to flow back into itself but as you can see it's quite tacky and it's not flowing anymore so I'm removing it it's put some interesting texture onto the page which is my goal and now I'm just going to make sure that I give this a good dry and you can just see kind of that broken glass kind of look to it and I love that so I'm putting the shimmery goodness on here and someone had requested that I do a another tutorial with that. So that's why I grabbed it instead of white paint. And quite honestly, for what actually ends up showing, I would have done just white paint here. And I would have done it across the whole background. This shimmery goodness is transparent to some degree. And I, I really wanted a more opaque look. So as I'm discovering now the transparency, I am going to come back in and I'm going to use a palette knife and apply some of the shimmery goodness more opaque wise. But there's not enough of it and it didn't give me the effect that I like. So it, it, it you know, you can easily skip this step or just put white, white paint through that. Now the shimmery goodness does take a long time to dry and there, there you got an effect it showed how that shimmers and shines. Now I just wanted to add a little bit more interest so I use this stamp it's one of my favorite stamps I will put a link to it and other things that I've used in the description box below so you can go through those links and check out the stuff that I have in my Amazon store. Thank you very much. But I wanted to build a little more interest, a little more color in here. I could have come back with some of the same stamps that I used at the beginning. You just never really know where a page is going to lead you. Now I cut out these flowers, flower shapes, out of some collage papers and papers that I've put leftover paint on that I've had in my stash and they are the colors from the picture at the very beginning that I got from that I took when I was my last visit at Bouchard Gardens. 
And now I'm just figuring out how to arrange them. I'm kind of flipping some of the components on here. But it's a very abstract floral pattern. So I play with it and then I have some other ones and I grab some more gel prints in green and I'm cutting out some leaves and I'm just experimenting. Am I getting the look that I like? Now I know at this stage when I'm collaging the focal point on, I know I'm going to do some shading and highlighting on these pieces and that is going to make it stand off from the background all the more. So I know that in my head. So if you are very close, your colors are very close to the background, you will have some ability to make it stand out more. And as you can see, I'm still playing with the composition. I'm not sure if I want to layer the flowers or have them kind of all in a row or what I want to do here. And it's going to change as I play with these pieces. And, you know, after a while, it just, it sometimes comes to you. So I'm just gluing these pieces together with the gel medium. Now some of these collage papers are coffee filters, some are on copy paper, some are on thicker paper. I have collage papers all different thicknesses and I like that. It adds just another element of interest to your finished page or project. So I'm just letting these dry and as I kind of put them in a bunch I kind of like that look so that's kind of my inspiration for where I'm going to go next. So I'm going to do some shading around these flowers right now before I even glue them down. It's just sometimes easier to do and if you're trying the float technique for the first time you might actually do it like this where you have the outside edge. When I did the, the pink background one, it's just a little bit easier to do and it helps you get the handle of it. If you're trying the flow technique and it doesn't work, just keep trying. And you can see how now those three parts of that flower really stand out with that shading. And I'm putting it both on the top of the flower and then on the part around it, like here, on the off. Sometimes I do one, sometimes I do the other, sometimes I do both. And I do use an angle brush. I find it easier, but you can use a flat brush as well. In fact, when I learned how to do it, I did it all with a flat brush. So you can see the quick difference there between the one that was already done and the one that hasn't been done yet. You could use a Stabilo All Pencil here, watercolor pencil. I just like using the acrylic paints and the float technique because it's permanent. <clears throat> and there's my trio of posies. So there they are before I did any of the shading and detailing and here's a picture afterwards. So you can see by doing the shading and then the fine line work with the white the difference that it's going to make. So now I've decided I'm going to have these 
kind of overlapping a little bit over here. And I'm just gluing it down to the background. So you can cut any shape of flowers and then just, you know, one bigger, one smaller, and then the round center, and you have your own funky flower design. And I've decided that I'm going to put the sentiment on the right hand side. And I kept it landscape like this because I had stamped the script this way and if I had turned it the other way it I would have had the script going kind of at an, a different angle and I didn't like that look. But when I did the stamping I didn't know. To avoid that, I could have done the script stamp going side to side and up and down, and that way it would have been both and I wouldn't matter. So I wanted the sentiment to stand out a little bit more off that background, so I decided, oh, I'm going to give it some of that pink from my painted papers, and I'm going to frame it. Then it kind of, you know, I'm going to edge this here and the pink paper just kind of slid a little bit to that angle there. And it started an idea for how I can glue this down that isn't just exactly straight. You're going to see that in a minute. Decided I'm going to edge the art journal page. And I'm going to use the float technique here to do edge across the top. So there I decide, oh, I'm going to put this at an angle or something. Just, you know, a little bit off center. And I like that look. It's just a little bit unexpected. It says, the quote says something like, a flower does not think of competing with the flower next to it. It just blooms. And every flower has its place in your yard. Now I'm just using the fine line bottle and I'm going around the edge with the black. And I just do it rather sketchily. I, I'm not trying to make a perfect line. Then to make it kind of look like applique, like sewing, I'm adding the white stitches on the flowers. And it lightens up the flowers a little bit and just kind of makes it. I don't know about you, when I, I start doing some projects, sometimes a, a certain technique or certain way of doing things seems to show up a lot in my work and then that phase passes and I'm on to something different. The fine line bottle I have used heavy bodied white paint and water and I only mix up very little at a time add the paint and add a little water at a time until the consistency is what you want. I am not putting a whole lot of pressure on the bottle. A little more shading on the leaves because I realized that I had not done that yet.
and I'm shading around the outside of the flowers. These are the little details, but they do make a difference. If you compare before and after shots, you, you see the subtle difference that it makes in just really bumping up that page. You could use charcoal, woodless charcoal pencil. You could use the Stabile All pencil here or the float technique like I'm doing. I have hoped you've enjoyed this tutorial. I hope you give it a try. Make your own funky flowers. If you do, please come and post what you do on my Facebook group or tag me in Instagram at Creative Katie. Thanks so much for joining me. As always, leave a comment, give me a thumbs up, and watch some more of my videos.